have a quote here, Aaron, and it reads, I selfishly like a lot of first time directors because they over prepare, they are super eager, and they have very little ego. And that quote is from none other than Mark Duplass of the Duplass Brothers. I definitely agree with that. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, I do think that when you're a new director, you feel like you have something to prove. And I think it was David F. Sandberg who said that you want to prepare 200% just to get 100% results. And I think especially first time directors, because they have something to prove or uh, they're nervous, they tend to over prepare a little bit. And when it comes to filmmaking, that's definitely not a bad thing. I, I, I've noticed that my movies get significantly better if I actually plan every single shot, every single moment. It sounds grueling and tedious and difficult, and it absolutely is, but it also, it also sounds obvious. Of course, you prepare, you do a better job, but it, it makes a world of a difference. I remember earlier on in my, in my you know, career, I remember you, you actually asked if, uh, what, what was one of the biggest mistakes I learned with my first feature? And I would say not preparing every single shot. I think especially on a, a much smaller budget film, if you actually over prepare, you know exactly what you're gonna shoot and you're gonna know every single moment that it is that you're shooting, uh, then the, the finished product is going to be so much better. Did you storyboard, do anything like that? I did not storyboard 15 North. It was, it was very much, again, from this approach of, I just want to get two cameras rolling at the same time, sort of shoot it in this very mumble Corey documentary style. Um, didn't want to really do that much planning. I did have a, a loose shot list um, just to sort of make sure I covered you know, basically got all the coverage that I needed. But since that movie, I've definitely spent a lot more time focusing on what's actually in the frame. Um, on that movie, it was just sort of like, let's point a camera at this actor, get their lines, and let's just do a couple takes of that and move on. I don't really do that anymore. How does a writer or filmmaker earn their audience? Uh, that's, a, that's also a good question. I, I think a writer or filmmaker probably earns their audience by being honest with themselves. I think it's like making a friend, you know, if you are a, if you're a good person and you have good intentions and you care about what it is that you're saying, I think people are going to listen and they're going to be interested. Um, if you, if you seem like you're, you know, making a movie or telling a story for all the wrong reasons, I think that's going to, it's going to shine through in your work. Uh, so I think, you know, you, you definitely earn an audience's trust in that way. And then of course, you know, the, the technical aspect of it, if it looks terrible, uh, it's going to be distracting and nobody, nobody's going to really even take the time to watch it. Even if the content itself is riveting and good, uh, you know, you kind of, you, you sort of need this baseline production value to say, okay. I know what I'm doing, now hear what I have to say. And what if you build an audience and they become so invested in your stories and your characters that they revolt because they wanted those characters and stories to become something else, but you as the creator, it's your imagination. But how much is the audience say involved in some of that? How much say do they have? If I could start audience? a revolution, I'd, I, I'd be happy. I could, I could die early. Um, um, I, I guess the best example, I, I mean, I've never really made anything overly controversial uh, that would cause anyone to revolt about anything. However, there is one horror short that we just released a few weeks ago called Diet. And we wanted to play with the tropes of sort of what makes a traditional horror film where you just have this, you know, usually it's a girl just home alone and something scary happens. She hears a noise or something is at the window and she goes up to it. 
and it's nothing. And then she goes into bed and then turns around and there's a scary monster and that's it. That's the end. And it's, it's like the most cliche kind of like little horror short you can imagine. And so I was thinking of a way to play around with that and have all of those same tropes. But then at the very end, you just have that main character die of natural causes, in which case he just dies of uh, choking on a carrot. And then a monster in the closet reveals herself and sighs with disappointment because she couldn't fulfill her duty as a scary monster who terrorizes her victims. Uh, so we released that and I, you know, I thought it was like kind of a funny comedy horror idea. A lot of people were confused by it. A lot of people got it. A lot of people were like, what the hell did I just watch? That, I, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so that was actually very interesting and it was particularly interesting to watch reaction videos of that film. Aaron, are you saying that every horror short that you do, people do reaction videos to? Just about every horror short. I th actually, I think every horror short that we've made, there are reaction videos online. And, and I, I do love watching them. Some, we even have shared a couple to our Social House Films Facebook page. Do they usually let you know or do you find them in search? There's only been one person that's ever let us know. Um, everyone else just, they just do it on their own. But I mean, that's, that's fair. I, they, they don't need to let us know. I, if they wanna watch it and react to it, then so be it, you know, that's why it's there. How does that feel that people are that affected by your work that they're taking time to make a reaction video? I think it's super cool. It's the, it's the, it's just such a cool feeling and experience to watch someone else watch what you just made and literally look them in the eye every moment of, you know, the film that you, that you just put out there. And sometimes you see genuine terror on their face and it's, it's just such a rewarding thing to see that kind of visceral response from a complete stranger. Have you ever reached out to a creator? and given feedback, good or bad? I tried to get an internship at Apatow Productions when I first uh, moved out here. Um, actually, I, I made a short horror film, come to think of it. It was a short horror documentary. It was like a mockumentary about the making of a zombie movie about love. And one of the guys that I made it with was family friends with Larry David and gave him a copy and I think I was like, I don't know, I was maybe 17 or 18 at this time. And Larry David watched it and told my friend, hey, tell, you know, Jesse and Aaron, the other filmmakers, that they did a great job. And that was, uh, that was super cool. So I, I remember kind of pushing my friend like, hey, you should, you know Larry David, you should uh, give this to him. Not necessarily his genre, but I'd be curious to, you know, I'm a huge fan of Larry David, so I'd love to see, you know, what he thinks.